Welcome back to another episode of Encounter with God Together, where I have our President Emeritus with us, Whitney Cunningham. Uh, Whitney is no stranger to the Encounter with God community. He has uh, led Encounter with God weekends. Uh, we're going to be working on an evening coming up, and he's written a number of Bible engagement resources uh, for Scripture Union under the the um, the Essential Series Bible series. So you can check those out if you're interested on our website. But Whitney, it's great to have you back with us again today. And uh, how are you? Well, I'm doing well, Gail. It's good to see you again. And it's good to be with our Encounter with God community here. And, uh, you know, we're entering into the fall season and uh, the weather is good and crisp here where I live. So it's just kind of a time of encouragement. So it's good to be here again. Yeah, good to have you. And I agree. It's, um, it's a refreshing kind of outside weather. So uh, hopefully that'll carry on to our conversation today. We'll be refreshed. Uh, let me pray for you, Whitney. Okay. Father, thank you for the changing of the seasons here, at least in the Northeast, and uh, for the fact that you remain unchanged, uh, even though you showed us um, so many different nuances of your creation and the way that you have um purposefully created us and the world around us. And I thank you for Whitney and for his, his love for your word and his uh, faithful study of it. And I pray for him today as he uh, shares with this community the, the things that you've given for him uh, to share today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, so Whitney, we're still in Hebrews. Uh, mm -hmm. I myself was the guest last week. Uh, so I, I kicked the series off, and I'm happy to pass the baton to you today, uh, starting out in Hebrews 6 through 8 this week. So I'm going to pass it over to you to share. Okay, great. Thank you, Gail. Um, yes, we're in Hebrews, and uh, this is a, you know, it's a wonderful and challenging book, Hebrews, I'm sure, as we're finding, because it's uh, written to um, hearers, uh, original listeners who were are very much, uh, you know, Hebrew community and and the ways of thinking and arguing and posing a, you know, a framing a, a discussion are very much Hebrew thought, and so it might be a little foreign to us. But if if you lean in just a little bit um, past what's uh, you know the things that we would want to think about it perhaps today. There's real riches in the book of Hebrews, um, and it's really worth digging a little bit. So um, we're going to dive into Hebrews uh, 6 to 8. But, you know, one of the things I wanted to comment on, Gail, before we got into the passage is um, the two writers. So we've mm. been reading for the last uh, several weeks um, this whole theme about the supremacy of Jesus Christ and, you know, supreme in this, supreme in that. It's been a wonderful theme. But it's a friend of mine, uh, the writer, the, the notes writer, is a friend of mine, John Grayston. And I've known him for years. He lives in England. He's a, he's a wonderful, uh, just, you know, he, his, his role was kind of the resident theologian for Scripture Union England and Wales. And I've interacted with him over the years. So I love to see his name because he's a real person and a real friend. <laughs> That's uh, great. And now we're going to read the, uh, the the notes from Howard Peskett, who's another person I know as an Encounter with God uh, writer. So I, I periodically myself write for Encounter with God. And what they do is uh, they draw us together uh, by Zoom. And uh, we have a kind of a uh, an Encounter with God writers fellowship. And Howard Peskett is, uh, is part of that. And the thing that it highlights for me and the thing that I wanted to say in this is one of the really great things about Encounter with God is that it gives you a global Christian perspective on the text. So it's not just a U.S. or an American perspective, which is fine, it's good. Mm. It kind of widens it. And it's one of the wonderful things about being part of the Scripture Union community, because Scripture Union, as you know, is in 130 countries around the world, and um, and one of the really uh, the, the things that makes the uh, the notes, anyways, rich is that people like John Grayston, and Howard Peskett, and even you know yours truly, we comment on the text, 
And uh, that just unpacks different levels of meaning to it. So anyways, our, we're all part of this global uh, Bible reading fellowship. And uh, that's what Scripture Union is. We're a union of people around the world committed to the scriptures and and that's our heartbeat okay you well, know I, I just want to say i i love that about about the guide as well whitney that it, it represents the global community and if you if you don't know what the guide is this is a copy of the most recent quarter and you can get it on our website uh scriptureunion.org you can also read it online or get it by email so those of you who are joining without being a faithful uh reader which many of you are uh, that that's what he's referencing, and uh, and thank you for that, Whitney. Yeah, and so um, well, with that, let's actually look at the text together. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so Hebrews uh, chapter six through eight, and you know we're going to read through this, uh, you know, kind of chunk by chunk through the week. But there are two themes that emerge uh, this week in our individual readings, and I just want to underscore them for us now. And the first theme is perseverance. Perseverance. And so the writer is really encouraging, you know, trying to help them remain faithful, help the hearers remain faithful. And Gail, if I could ask you to read just a very short passage that highlights this theme, Hebrews chapter 6, verses 10 to 12. Sure, Whitney. Um, 10 to 12. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Thank you. So, you know, that's just a short snapshot of the, uh, a couple of verses that highlight the perseverance theme, pers persevere in our faith and following, you know, don't become lazy. And also uh, the, the, the word imitate, imitation. Mm. And so <clears throat> um, sort of two th themes or two components of persevering in our faith is one, encouraging one another. And we need that. You know, we just need encouragement. You know, they say, um, you know, it takes 10 compliments to make up for one negative comment. You, you know, oh, why wow. that you net you well, with me anyways, I remember the negative comment <laughs> really sticks in and I need a whole lot of encouragement. But isn't that true of our faith? We just we need encouragement. We don't, and and so the writer is reminding us. Part of persevering is we need to encourage each other. Mm. Uh, but the second angle on that is imitate. Uh, so being an example, um, you know, to to others. When you see others doing the right thing, or when you see others, you know, doing something really well, you want to do that. And it's the same is true in our faith. So we need to be encouragers but we need to be good examples so that others can imitate. And those two elements are um, uh, key ingredients in, in helping us persevere in our faith. And that's one of the themes that I wanna suggest that we look for. And there's lots more in these verses. Those are just highlights. So the first thing I wanna suggest is let's look for what we learn about persevering in our faith as we read this week. Hmm. The second theme, there's a second theme that I want to underscore. It's a little bit more challenging, and it's the notion of priesthood, priesthood. And um, so, Gail, if you would read uh, Hebrews chapter 8, just verses 1 and 2, it'll capture the flavor of uh, this priesthood theme. Happy to. Um, now, the main point of what we're saying is this. We do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven and who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle set up by the Lord, not by a mere human being. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, <clears throat> you know, this is a real challenge. Th this is a challenging section in our week. And so you're going to really have to kind of think about it. And, and one of the, 
the perhaps the most mysterious things or challenging things is this whole thing, a priest like Melchizedek. Mm. Now, there's not time here to fully unpack it and, uh, and to all the different nuances. I'm going to leave that to our astute Bible reading Encounter with God community to unpack that. But what I want to highlight here in, in, in chapter 8 is after going through all the, this uh, part about Melchizedek, uh, the writer pauses and says, but now the main point, I don't know if, if we heard yeah. it, it starts in, at the beginning of chapter eight. Now, the main point and, um, is that we have this high priest, and it kind of gets to the theme of uh, uh, that John Grayston was getting to, the, the supremacy of Christ, the supreme, the ultimate high priest interceding for us at the Father and with the Father. Just take that one thought. You know, that Jesus is our high priest, that he is interceding to the Heavenly Father on our behalf. And um, if I could just extend John Grayston's uh, su supremacy theme, I think what the, he the, the writer to the Hebrews is saying in this section is Jesus is the supreme interceder. He's the supreme interceder. And I want to just suggest that we take that thought, you know, mm -hmm. just focus on that thought. As you read through about uh, Melchizedek and you read through about how the writer then connects that to what Jesus does on our behalf. And what an incredible uh, reality that is for us as believers, that we have a supreme interceder in Jesus Christ. So those are the two themes to look for, perseverance and priesthood. Now, there's one last thing uh, that I just uh, would like to share, and that is on this, this notion of uh, interceder. So one of the things that we have now in the new covenant, uh, the second covenant, you know, that we're, we're reading about this contrast between the, the first covenant and the second covenant, the old covenant, the new covenant, that's what a whole, a whole lot of Hebrews is about. <clears throat> is that we now have the Holy Spirit. You know, so when Jesus went, ascended into heaven back to the right hand of the Father, he sent us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And in addition to having a supreme interceder, we also now have the Holy Spirit interceding for us. So it's, it's like a double incredible blessing that we have as believers in this new covenant uh, season, era, that we're in. Now, here's how I kind of make that practical. So I've shared, I think, before uh, with our Encounter with God uh, community that I, I, one of the things I really love to do is, is take a prayer walk at night. I walk and I look into the heavens and I just pray out loud and I just say what's on my heart and mind and talk to my Heavenly Father. And um, I just love those times. But there are times when I'm praying and I'm stuck. You know, it's like something that's a burden and I can't lift it or it's a problem and it won't go away. And I've prayed about it walk after walk after walk. <laughs> and it's like I say the same thing. And, um, and there are times when I just realize God knows my, <laughs> my request is. And so what I do is I imagine this, this idea of of Jesus, the supreme interceder, and the Holy Spirit, are are you know um, are the third person of the Trinity interceding for us. And so, what I'll say on those things that I'm I'm just stuck on, and they don't the boulder doesn't move. I just pray, Holy Spirit, intercede for dot dot dot, and I just mm -hmm. do that over and again. It's like my words aren't going to do it. My words and my solution isn't lifting the boulder. And maybe God doesn't want to lift the boulder yet for whatever reasons. So I just invite the Holy Spirit to intercede in this situation without my own solution. Holy Spirit, intercede for X. Holy Spirit, please intercede for Y. Holy Spirit, please intercede for Z, whatever it is. And I would suggest maybe this week, as you're reading about Jesus, our supreme interceder, 
perhaps there's burdens, there's boulders in your mind, your heart, your life. Uh, actually invite Jesus, verbally invite Jesus and the Holy Spirit to intercede with his words, not just your words and solution. And see if, if God begins to uh, work in your heart and, and mind in ways that perhaps you didn't imagine. So that's what I see in Hebrews. I see in this, this section, this, this um, section that if we dig, there's some real gold in here on the notion of perseverance and priesthood. So uh, that's where we're going this week. I like it, Whitney. Thank you very much. That's a real practical and actually comforting kind of idea. So I'm sure that that others will will remember that this week and put it into practice. I know I'm going to think about it myself. So um, yeah, next week we'll be we'll be talking about Hebrews nine and ten, and we'll have Whitney with us again. So I pray that that uh, God will speak to you through His Word this week, and we'll look forward to unpacking even more next week. Thank you, Whitney. Sounds good. Looking have a great have a great week. You too. See you, Gail. Bye bye.